Hey guys, how's it going? I don't know if you guys have heard this before or not, but there's a legend, or or is it a myth? I don't know, that all you really need to play Crisis, the OG Crisis, is a CPU with just one really fast core. I don't know how or why I see this comment so much, but it seemed like a good thing to check out for a quick video. I have 8 cores and 16 threads to play around with, so we can basically chip things in half until we get down to one core and see where or if we have to drop performance. I'm using GOG version of Crisis, and the system I'm testing on consists of a Ryzen 2700, a Sapphire R9 Fury, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200, and we're running Windows 10 Pro. The footage you're seeing now is with all 8 cores and 16 threads enabled. I used the same map and tried to duplicate the action as best as I could for each run, but there's bound to be some variance. The settings are the same each time, 1080p with all settings at high, and textures and water detail set to ultra. So after getting my benchmark figures for this scenario, I then went into BIOS and I disabled SMT. And the capture that you see here is just 8 cores with no extra threads. After this run, I would just simply disable cores in the task manager with the affinity setting, leaving just four cores checked for the next benchmark. Contact. Then two. And then finally dropping down to one core enabled. So here's Crisis running on four cores, and so far I haven't noticed any difference. Everything seems to be running just as smooth as it did with 8. And dropping down to 2 cores, it seems pretty much the same. One thing I did notice throughout, though, is the very low utilization of the GPU, no matter how many cores are enabled. So what happens if we drop down to just a single core for Crisis, under the best possible scenario since we happen to have seven other cores able to handle all the other Windows tasks. I already know from testing Crisis with single core CPUs, but here we go. This is Crisis running on just one Ryzen core. That lone core spends most of its time at 100% usage, and there is definitely a noticeable frame rate decrease. When you load Crisis, you get that splash screen that says, Play to win with Core 2 Extreme, which tells me that this game is definitely optimized for two cores. Any older single core has a very hard time running Crisis, so this wasn't a surprise to me. But it pretty much confirms that the OG Crisis runs best on at least two fast cores. So how does this all stack up in the end? Let's put it into a graph to make it easier to compare. I think from 8 cores and 16 threads down to 2 cores, this can be considered basically no difference. The differences in the chart could easily be variants in each run, as they will never play out the same every time, and they're so close to begin with. But with the single core, you can not only see the significant decrease in the chart, but you can also see and feel it in the gameplay. So that pretty much confirms that the OG Crisis definitely prefers at least 2 cores. The performance deficit on a single core would be even more noticeable if that single core also had to process Windows background tasks as well. I don't know why this is a myth, as it's pretty irrelevant anyways. No one's gaming on a single core CPU unless it's a retro gaming rig, and they're most likely not playing Crisis. But the myth is out there, and I was interested enough to check it out. I know some games do utilize a single core, like Fear for instance, but Crisis is definitely a dual core game. So what do you guys think? Have you heard this before or, or seen it in comments? Anyways, thanks for letting me kill some time with you this evening, and you guys take care, and I'll see you on the next one.